Fenimore Asset Management welcomes you to this podcast. Fenimore Asset Management, Fenimore, is manager of the FAM funds. Fenimore's proprietary bottom-up fundamental research uncovers a unique perspective, and we hope this information is beneficial to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Putnam, Senior Vice President of Fenimore, and I'm speaking today with the managers of the FAM Small Cap Fund about their research. During this Q&A, you'll learn about how Fenimore selects quality businesses out of the Russell 2000 and why we're different as an active small cap strategy. I'll let the gentleman introduce themselves. Yeah, hey, Ann. Uh, this is Andrew Board. Uh, I've been uh, here at Fenimore since, uh, I guess, 2005 and in the industry since 96, so quite a, quite a while now, I suppose. Uh, I've been a co-manager on the small cap strategy for about uh, a little over five years now. And um, like Kevin, you know, all of us have some specialties. So I, I tend to focus on things like financials, uh, software stocks, a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, uh, you know, between us, we, we tend to follow just about everything under the moon, but that's kind of my role here at Fenimore. I'm Kevin Joya. Um, I've been working with Andrew uh, for the past uh, about just over five years. I've been at Fenimore since I graduated college in 2010, starting as a junior analyst, going through the CFA curriculum, uh, becoming a full-time senior analyst, and more recently a, a co-manager of the small cap fund uh, for the past several years. My areas of focus tend to be more uh, consumer driven, so both consumer staples and consumer discretionary. Uh, however, as Andrew alluded to, uh, we tend to focus on quality companies in, uh, in all sectors, wherever they may be. To preface the podcast, we're speaking to small cap investing, which is a very broad category. So let's help our listeners understand Fenimore's niche and the part of the market that FAM small cap focuses on. Yeah, you're right, Ann. Uh, it is a broad uh, category. We're we're, we focus on American companies. So they tend to trade on an American exchange. They tend to be uh, part of the Russell 2000. So the Russell committee resets that index every May. So every May, sometimes early June, I guess, we learn the new market cap range. So last time they did it in, in 2020, the range was, uh, oh, I think it was about 100 million up to 4.4 billion. And we want to buy stocks underneath that 4.4 billion market cap uh, range. We can own them uh, after they go over that if, if we get it all right, but that's where we start. Got it. Given that the index is 2000 companies, which is much different from the concentration of our FAM small cap fund, how do you pick through that universe to find the 20 or 30 businesses that you're looking for? I think overall, what we're always looking for are quality businesses, and uh, this approach really isn't anything new. Fenimore has been incorporated since 1974 and has always focused on quality businesses or what we deem quality businesses. And those tend to be businesses that are very profitable, uh, that have good balance sheets, and they maintain their profitability uh, and growth over time because the business has some type of competitive advantage that, that we can understand. Yeah, maybe I can add something there. Uh, in some ways, the first step is just to remove the unprofitable companies. It's, it's always startling. We, we see different data all the time, but the Russell 2000 has a, a large percentage of its companies that actually lose money. Uh, sometimes you can see 20%, 30%. It's the data changes based on what day you do it, I suppose. Um, so that, that, that alone keeps us out of those companies. We want very, very profitable businesses that continue to, can continue to be profitable for a long time. And then after that, you find a lot that are profitable, but they're just not that impressive. So to filter it down, we'll run screens. So we recently did a screen as an example, and where uh, we sorted on return on assets, return on equity, return on tangible equity. You know, we really looked at it any way you could think. And we got down to about 495 businesses that, that look pretty good on that, uh, on that screen. And that was kind of a good place for us to start. That's great. Interesting to see that you can cut the universe down by about three quarters and get to those 495 businesses. What do you do next to choose the 20 to 30 that might be in the portfolio? Yeah, that, that's interesting. And um, as I mentioned, you know, I've been doing this a while now. Uh, so of those 495 companies, 
we've looked at a lot of them. Uh, it's kind of startling how it adds up over time as you get older. But you know, we've looked at a, a huge percentage of those companies. We're always you know rechecking, but. A lot of times, you know, they're going to fail out on, on any number of variables. So you might, um, you might get into it and they have an ESG issue. You might find the accounting is just kind of aggressive. Something doesn't look right on the accounting. And, and we don't like to take those kinds of chances. Um, many times, it's, it, the company is very profitable today, but you have this fear that that's not going to be sustainable. So maybe the internet is coming for their business. It could be disrupted. Um, you know, those sometimes you just can't get comfortable with that type of risk. So we don't want to do that. Others are very good businesses, but there's just way too much debt on them. So we, you know, we, we don't like to play those games. We don't want to be at the bottom of a recession wondering if our business is going to make it through or not. So we, we just do not like a, a lot of debt. Kind of a similar concept, really. There's a few businesses that use a lot of derivatives. And as we saw in, you know, like the great financial crisis, when the derivatives markets lock up, you know, that's, that's pretty catastrophic. So we just don't like those kinds of risk. Um, other examples, you know, I can remember when uh, the government really came after for-profit education. So a lot of those businesses were very profitable. Then you wake up one day and the U.S. government is, is really trying to make life hard. We, we try to avoid getting in the way of those kind of issues for sure. Um, you know, and sometimes you just find a company I would describe as too hard. And I'll give you kind of a vague example. We, we, we don't like to use call out companies, of course, but there's a, there's a company I've been following for years that's in the material sector. Uh, they have a lot of um, basically food ingredients, some of them very specialized, and they're very profitable. And I just would keep digging and asking questions and following up with more questions. And ultimately, you realize the advantage is like a secret formula. And so far, they can do it better than their competitors. Look, I'm no chemist. Even if I was, I don't think I could ever really get comfortable with that. If the competitors who are mostly overseas, you know, lower cost competitors, if they could figure it out, if, if they ever cracked the code, I think I'd probably be the last guy in America to know that it happened. You know what I mean? So you just can't, some, some businesses, you're just never going to get your mind around and that's okay. So after we kind of run through these, this 490 or so businesses, kind of eliminating a few for this reason, a few for that reason, it really shakes out to about 100 or 200 companies, which is kind of amazing. There's, see, we start with 2,000 businesses. You'd think there'd be a lot to choose from, but if you really have that high quality focus, at least what we think of as high quality, we get down to a much smaller universe of 100 or 200 companies. And, you know, you shouldn't watch TV if you're trying to figure out what investors do. Kevin and I have, have quiet, boring lives where we spend all of our time studying those 100 or 200 companies. You know, we're on the phone talking to them. We're at conferences. Uh, we're reading the 10K. You know, we're talking to experts if we could track an expert down in these industries and just trying to keep getting deeper and deeper on those 100 or 200 companies. You know, maybe working on a, a new company that's new to the world that maybe can make it to that, that star-studded list. So that's really what we do every day. And we kind of ignore what's going on in the rest of the stock market. So Kevin, could you give us an example of the way in which you get to one or two of those businesses amongst the subset that Andrew just described and what the criteria are to make it into the portfolio? Sure. So as we talked about, we're looking for quality businesses and, and by reducing away the businesses that don't really meet what we're looking for from a quality standpoint or from the ability to understand the long-term prospects of the business, we get down to about the 100 and 200 companies that we study regularly. Um, and then at that point, it's really a function of valuation. It's no secret that many of these businesses are very strong, especially relative to the opportunity set out there. So we'll often need some type of event uh, that will sort of trigger up an interesting valuation for us to to invest in. So we like to say we're either investing in companies that are under a rock or under a cloud. So companies that are under a rock may be, may not be so followed by wall street. They may be uh, a little small, uh, just maybe the business apparently doesn't seem so interesting. So a really good example of that would be an investment that we have in the leading frozen food supplier in, in Western Europe. So on paper, this sounds like a rather boring business, but if you look further into the business, the board has a few folks that ran another consumer company uh, very successfully that produced 
uh, very strong results over 15 years. And if you dig even further into the, the board's past, they've been doing uh, a similar model for their whole career. And they're very experienced in businesses that produce sustainable cash flow that they can then reinvest into acquisitions or growing the business internally. So uh, as Andrew alluded to, we lead pretty boring lives, but I was one of the few people that got excited about a business that essentially sold frozen peas uh, throughout Western Europe. And just to clarify on that too, we wouldn't have invested uh, in a pure European company unless we had access to management stateside. And uh, our contact is in New York City who, who is very knowledgeable about the business. So that's one type of one type of example. Now, the best opportunities usually come when businesses are under a cloud or the markets are in, are in panic. So that, that's usually when investor sentiment um, is very negative because the short term outlook is not as certain as one would like. So as long term investors, we like to take advantage of that. So uh, during uh, the initial lockdown of COVID, when the market declined as much as it did, we got opportunities in certain high quality businesses that almost never trade evaluations that we'd like to begin a position in. So one example would be a, a software company that we own that connects uh, sellers of goods to the buyers of goods. So the way it works is if you are selling goods into a grocery store like Apple's, you pay a subscription fee and you're connected to every single grocery store um, out there. What this replaces is a ton of automated processes such as faxes, tracking inventory on Excel sheets, um, and it's all available at a really, really reasonable cost uh, to, the, to the person subscribing. Uh, so it's a win-win. The consumer uh, is more happy because they get better connection to their suppliers. The supplier's happier because they get more insight into their supply chain, and it's all at a very affordable cost. This is a, in a really early stage too. So what we see is a lot of growth uh, ahead for this business for a very long period of time. Thanks, Kevin. Talking about supermarkets and frozen peas, you've made me hungry. So uh, if you could help me understand now within that analysis and parsing out those best in class ideas, how does FAM small cap look on a relative basis to peer group on a risk adjusted factor? Sure. I think in general, what you're going to find is we tend to hold up uh, better in down markets. And to the extent that a market is very excited and maybe even somewhat speculative at times, we'll, we'll tend to lag. And that's a function of the types of businesses that we're in. So we're trying to run uh, a marathon and earn steady results uh, year to year. And that's at the portfolio level, but it's because of the businesses that we invest in that we get those types of results. So businesses that don't uh, utilize too much debt and businesses that generate steady cash profits uh, tend to hold up better when times are tough, uh, their stock prices do. And then when folks are interested in more speculative areas of the market or even uh, different asset classes or maybe even new asset classes, uh, we're gonna tend to not participate in those things. <laughs> And, and, and we're not going to see the type of kind of speculative performance. But over time, uh, we believe this kind of produces consistent results. And that's going to show up in, in sort of our risk profile. So finishing up here, thinking about bottom up investing, you can take any number of approaches. Why do either of you think that your methodology is right? And how is it benefiting Fenimore? Yeah, I'll take a shot at that, Ann. Um you know, honestly, we, we've looked at every approach you could think of, you know, as individuals, as a team, as a company. Uh, I myself, um, you know, started out uh, in my youth at a very deep value shop. Uh, you know, I, before that, I guess I, I helped uh, growth investors avoid companies with bad accounting. You know, I've, I've, we've kind of seen it all. To us, this is the approach. It's really just logical and prudent. You know, we recognize other people have different opinions, but th that's okay. Um, when you really get through all the noise, a business, a stock will track the progress of the underlying business. So as their earnings grow, the stock will grow over time. When you're a deep value investor, you, you can sometimes find extremely cheap stocks, but, but those companies tend to be pretty mediocre. And you know they, they might have a nice quick pop, but they don't have a great future ahead of them. At the other end of the spectrum, uh, some high growth investors it's not so much they're focusing on growing earnings per share. They're really 
focusing on young speculative companies that don't have any profits. They're all talking about taking over the world and becoming the next Microsoft and they all have a great story. And, and a lot of, you know, look, we're, we've done this long enough to know that a lot of those stories just don't pan out. So what we really want is a company that already has shown it's very profitable. And every indication is they will always be very profitable. The competitive advantages are sustainable. And that because of that, and because of the opportunity set, they can get much larger in time. And so we're not doing speculations. These are companies that are actually getting it done now and, we, and have the cash earnings and, and can be much larger. And then of course, you always wanna have the right leadership team. And we want a leadership team that is capable and ethical and, and we spend a lot of time on this and, uh, you know, capable might usually shows up in the numbers. They've already done it. They've already been profitable might show up as the example Kevin gave a moment ago about our Western European uh, frozen uh, food company. That, that whole management team has had success at other companies. So we, we like those management teams that are proven that they know what they're doing and, and they treat uh, everybody ethically. And then, of course, if you do that, if you're already very profitable, you're typically going to have a very safe balance sheet. And that's very important to us, as Kevin mentioned. And then, uh, you know, the last piece is the piece you're kind of waiting on at times. It's just finding a decent valuation to uh, purchase the stock. And a lot of times it's just adding to what we already own. We like to just keep adding to these great companies, which there's nothing better than adding to something you know and have known for years and years. So, uh, you know, if, if we can get all that to line up, you know, our, our performance should follow the earnings growth of these underlying businesses. Excellent. I'm really grateful for all of you who have listened in today to hear from Kevin and Andrew about investing in small caps. In our opinion, the conclusion that we draw is active management wins. Using a clear and consistent approach with those quality filters, both of the gentlemen have spoke about, can show long-term appreciation. We're especially excited about the conviction at Fenimore. Our managers do that deep due diligence. And today's podcast showed us how it supports the concentration of the portfolio and risk adjusted results. Again, thank you for listening. And we appreciate the insights from Kevin and Andrew. Hope to hear back from all of you again soon. Performance data quoted as historical. Past performance is not indicative of future results current performance may be higher or lower than the performance data quoted. Investment returns may fluctuate. The value of your investment upon redemption may be more or less than the initial amount invested. All returns are net of expenses. To obtain performance data that is current to the most recent month end for each fund, as well as other information on the FAM funds, please go to FenimoreAsset.com or call 800 932 3271. Please consider a fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses carefully before investing. The FAM Funds Prospectus or Summary Prospectus contains this and other important information about each fund and should be read carefully before you invest or send money. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus for each fund, as well as other information on the FAM Funds, please go to benamoreasset.com or call 800-932-3271. The principal risks of investing in the fund are stock market risk, stocks fluctuate in response to the activities of individual companies and to general stock market and economic conditions. Stock selection risk, Benamore utilizes a value approach to stock selection and there is risk that the stocks selected may not realize their intrinsic value or their price may go down over time. And small cap risk. Prices of small cap companies can fluctuate more than the stocks of larger companies and may not correspond to changes in the stock market in general. Any references herein to any of Fenimore's past or present investments, portfolio characteristics or performance have been provided for illustrative purposes only. It should not be assumed that these investments were or will be profitable or that any future investments will be profitable or will equal the performance of these investments. There can be no guarantee that the investment objectives of Benamore will be achieved. Any investment entails a risk of loss. The purpose of this discussion is to provide investors with an update on financial market conditions. 
the description of certain aspects of the market is a condensed summary only. This summary does not purport to be complete and no obligation to update or otherwise revise such information is being assumed. This discussion is for informational purposes only and are not otherwise intended as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to purchase any security or other financial instrument. This summary is not advice, a recommendation, or an offer to enter into any transaction with Fenimore or any of their affiliated funds. This discussion may contain statements based on the current beliefs and expectations of Fenimore's management and are subject to significant risks and uncertainties. Actual results may differ from those set forth in the forward-looking statements. Securities offered through Fenimore Securities, Inc. member FINRA slash SIPC and advisory services offered through Fenimore Asset Management, Inc.